Hello, and happy Wednesday from my backyard on this nice sunny day before all the storms roll in. Um, I thought I'd do my reading outside today just because it's so nice and slight wind. Warm. I smell someone roasting coffee off in the distance. It just feels like what I need. So got my green screen hanging up on a little South Philly clothesline, and we'll try to get that done. See some of my gardening there. I have one of the cats out here exploring. Ideally, I would have my green screen set up on this nice sunny spot, but I don't know how I'm going to hang that there, so we'll give this a shot. I might get a lot of weird contrasts, but we'll make it work. All right, here we go. All right, hopefully this works. If not, it was fun anyway. So we're back with artists and their pets, and we are going to be reading about Salvador Dali today. So this one's going to be exciting. Um, I definitely know he had a cat. He's got some fun pictures of him with a cat, so uh, we'll see if he had more than one. All right. Salvador Dali, Spanish Surrealist. Salvador Dali loved to shock people. I hope that chime isn't too loud, but we'll find out. Salvador Dali loved to shock people. His painting style was smooth, elegant, and surreal, and so were his pet ocelots, who accompanied him accompanied him everywhere he went. An ocelot is essentially like a uh, domesticated uh, wild cat. <laughs> and they look bigger and they kind of are more into big cat things like jumping and exploring and killing things. <laughs> Not people, but like birds. From an early age, the Spanish artist Salvador Dali showed outstanding artistic skills. Born in Figueres, a small town outside of Barcelona, in 1904, to a wealthy family, he had his first drawing lessons at age 10. As a teenager, he was inspired by futurist paintings that showed things from several angles to capture a sense of movement. At 17, he was heartbroken when his mother died. He moved away to Madrid, attended the Madrid School of Fine Arts, where he experimented with Impressionist and Pointillist styles. Three years later, he was expelled for insulting his teachers. Whoopsie. <laughs> wonder what he said. Meanwhile, he was already exhibiting his work locally and had discovered the work of artist Giorgio de Chirico, who painted nightmarish odd scenes. Dali also began studying the work of Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. I'm sure you can think of who Freud is, the psychologist they usually represent with a patient reclining on the uh, ottoman or whatever it is. Shay Lounge. Freud explored the human mind. He wrote about our inner thoughts, which he said contain hidden truths and desires, and he described the mind as being like an iceberg. The tip of an iceberg seen above the surface of the water is a small fraction of the whole thing. This is like the conscious mind, our awareness. Just below the water is the larger part of the iceberg, like our subconscious mind that contain memories and stored knowledge. Finally, the largest part of the iceberg is deep under the water, like the unconscious mind that we are rarely aware of, but that influences our judgments, feelings, and behaviors. Oh, there's a little iceberg picture. I hope you can see that. The sun is so bright in my eyes. <laughs> this is a fun idea, maybe not the best idea. In 1926, Dali even called himself Dali and not Salvador. Okay, that is your last name. <laughs> moved to Paris. So in 1926, he moved to Paris where he met Pablo Picasso and became fascinated by Cubism. Inspired by the 17th century painter Diego Velasquez, he grew a long, curly mustache that became his trademark. Diego Velasquez was a Spaniard who had a nice, lovely mustache. In 1929, Dali worked with the Spanish director, Luis Bunel, to make a short, disturbing film about an obsession called Unquien Andalou. Unquien Andalou, an Andalusian dog. I should have just said the American or the English. <laughs> the English way of saying that. Oh my god. 
I haven't drinking all my coffee yet, you guys. Um, all right, I'm gonna start that sentence over. Um, in 1929, Dali worked with Spanish director Luis, Luis Bunel to make a short, disturbing film about an obsession called an Andalusian dog, which made the surrealist notice Dali. Inspired by Freud's theories, surrealism was an art movement that started in Paris in 1924. Surreal means above real, and surrealists express their inner thoughts and dreams through their art. So, like... There's some things of realism in there, like the way objects are drawn is somewhat realistically, but it's above it. It's like floating out there a little bit, like a dream. Dali began making more films and extremely detailed and realistic paintings with bizarre and unexpected things happening in them, like dreams or like nightmares. He described his paintings as hand-painted dream photographs. Dali met Elena Ivanovna Diakonovna. Ivanovna Diakonova, Diakonova, known as Gallup, in August 1929. She was Russian, 10 years older than Dali, and at the time married to the surrealist poet Paul Elure. She became Dali's muse, and he painted her often. Cat's trying to. One of the other cats is trying to get out, so I think I'm just going to run away for a second and let them come on, bit. And back. Dali had some important exhibitions, and he was invited to join the surrealist group that met in the Montparnasse quarter of Paris. They admired Dali's way of expressing the subconscious in his paintings. His painting style was smooth and lifelike, showing uncomfortable situations. He also put on art performances wearing strange costumes, and he made odd objects such as a telephone with a lobster for its receiver. <laughs> After they met, Dali and Gala became romantically linked, and Dali's father was furious when he heard about it. He also saw his son's connection with the Surrealist as a bad influence on his Christian morals. They had a huge argument, and Dali's father told him that he had to end his relationship um, with Gala. But Dali ignored him, and follow. In that following summer, he and Gala rented a small fisherman's cabin together. Over the years, Dali bought the fisherman's cabin and other cabins around it, eventually turning them into one beautiful villa by the sea. Oh. Weird. I'm gonna go there. He and Gala married in 1934, and his father reluctantly accepted her as his son's wife. In 1958, they remarried in a grand Catholic ceremony. Gala inspired many of Dali's paintings. She also worked as his business manager, organizing their extravagant lifestyle, which eventually included using some rather exotic pets as accessories. In Paris in 1969, Dali was photographed walking an ant eater. In 1934, the art dealer Julian Levy introduced Dali to the United States with an exhibition of his work in New York. It caused a sensation, and a special Dali ball was held in his honor. Later that year, he and Gala went to a masquerade party, also in New York, but their costumes were extremely distasteful. They horrified his new admirers, and he had to apologize. He continued to shock people on purpose. When he returned to Paris, Dali began to have many arguments with the Surrealist, and in 1934, he was expelled from the Surrealist group, mainly because of his different views about art and politics. I didn't know he was expelled from their group. <laughs> Yet despite no longer being part of the group, Dali continued painting in his Surrealist style. You don't know that style? And he became the most famous Surrealist of all time. Many of his paintings were inspired by artists such as Gustave Courbet and Jean Vermeer, but his emotional themes and subjects remained as weird as ever. When German troops entered France, and wow, it's a longer chapter, this makes up for the other day. When German troops entered France in 1939, um, at the outbreak of World War II, he and Gala went to live in the United States. Dali seemed to become even more eccentric as time passed. He once said, 
The only difference between me and a madman is that I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Um, Dali was world famous and lived an excessive lifestyle paid for by the money he earned for his art. Two ocelots, wild cats named Babu and Booba, were gifts to him. They often accompanied him to restaurants and parties, frequently causing damage. <laughs> a story is told that while Dali was visiting a Paris art gallery with Babu, the gallery owner shouted at him, Your cat has made a nuisance on my priceless 17th century engravings. Dali replied, A nuisance of Dali's can only increase their value. You're not the person you want to invite to your parties. Dali's early paintings were small, but his art grew with his fame. By the end of his career, he was making paintings as tall as giraffes. So the cats and a little example of him holding a small painting of his, but a bigger one behind. Um, as well as painting, Dali designed jewelry, advertising, stage sets, furnitures, and ballets. He made films and sculptures, and he wrote and illustrated books. In 1969, Dali illustrated Lewis Carroll's classic children's story, Alice in Wonderland, which gave him many opportunities to draw animals in a surreal way. And if anybody ever gets me a copy of that book, my heart is yours. In 1945, Dali worked with Alfred Hitchcock, creating dreamlike sequences in the film Spellbound. I didn't know that either. In 1971, the Dali Museum opened in Ohio, and in 1974, the Teatro Museo Dali opened in Figueres. He died in Figueres in 1989, aged 85. What a life. He had a good time. I think that St. Petersburg has a Dali museum now, too. I've never been to it, but I'm going to need to do that. Go visit my friend down there in, in that area and go to the museum. Um, so... I want you to illustrate a dream of yours. Um, you can use whatever medium or material you want and think of the weirdest thing. And wow, I must have, I didn't realize today was Salvador Dali, but you guys, last night I had such a weird dream. It was my backyard. I was looking from a window, but it wasn't exactly this backyard. So how poignant that I decided to come out here this morning. I think it's all just coming back to me. Oh my God. So I'm looking out of a window into my backyard and I see like this lizard. I'm thinking, oh, how strange. I never see lizards back here. And it was kind of more of a um, salamander type thing uh, with the colors on it. And that I think was in my head because of a friend's Facebook post of one in his little bog pond that he built. Um, but then I look at the lizard and there's like a whole parade of them going into this crack in the foundation of the house, which doesn't exist. I got a lot wood. And so this parade of lizards is going in. And then I think they took one of the cats. I remember the cat being injured or in danger somehow. So these cats were like attacking the lizards. But then I was also like, oh my God, they're in the house. They're in the foundation of the house. And then <laughs> I was in like the bathroom or another small room. And there's this big hole in the floor that was covered up by like a slab of marble or something to walk on, but you could still see into the hole. And I kept thinking that's where the lizards are going to come. That's where they're coming. And you know, there's a lot of other weird stuff that happened, but that was my weird dream. So go interpret that Freud and tell me what it means about me. All right. Um, I want to see those dream drawings that you guys come up with. If you can't remember your dream today, what you should do is wait till tomorrow. First thing when you wake up, write down your dream. Put a notebook by your bed and write down as much as you can remember and then draw an illustration from that. It's going to be good. All right. See ya.